Let me ask you a question today. Who is in charge of life? Who is in control of life? Normally you hear very many Christians saying something to this effect, God is in control. I know this and this and this and this and that happened, but God is in control. And I have a speaker, one of my mentors who normally poses that question and asks, "Let me ask you, when someone else's daughter is being raped or people are being murdered, and you're saying God is in control, what exactly are you talking about?" Well, I know I've taken this just totally out of tangent, but I want us to discuss one more thing today that is going to help us understand that we are in charge. We're not firing God. We're not saying God is not needed and so on and so forth. But I'm saying that there are some things, if there's one particular thing that is absolutely important in life and we need to exercise it. Things are not happening or we are not in control because we are not doing this one thing listen welcome to the life signatures podcast with Lawrence Namale Lawrence is a life coach author and cannot speak who loves to talk about different topics on purpose productivity and resilience his mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you life signatures podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut there's got to be more to life than this and now here is your host Lawrence Namale Well, guess what that one thing is? It's what I've been talking about all these episodes. It's simply this decision making. We are put on earth to make decisions and to act upon those decisions. And the kind of life that we live is determined by the number of decisions we are making, the frequency in which we are making those decisions, how fast we make those decisions. And so on and so forth. In other words, without making these decisions, we are not in charge, we are not in control, probably. But the time someone is saying that God is the one who is in control, they have not made a decision, they do not have the capacity to make a decision, they do not have the power to make a decision, or so they think. And when you say that God is not maybe supposed to necessarily be in control, we are not necessarily saying that God doesn't exist and there's no part for God to play. There is the part for the human being to do and then there is a the part for God to do. There's actually a quote someone said, "Do your part and let God do his part." For the most part, the human is not doing his part and basically delegating that part, quote unquote, to God. You're supposed to make the decisions but you're waiting on God. You're supposed to move on but you're waiting on God. Waiting on God because, quote unquote, God is in control. God is not maybe in a sullen control even in that relationship even in that business even in those finances even in that career even in those pursuits even in your health at times maybe even most times it is not up to God it is up to us and our decision making the decisions we make affect our destinies and in fact sometimes the decisions we make they put God in motion and by the way even when you want God to be in control you've got to make the decision yourself and invite God to to be in control the past of decision making can never be underestimated can never be underestimated in life we all are supposed to make decisions we were created predominantly to thrive through decision making and i'm talking on a personal level i'm talking on an individual level You know, even if you're talking about a country or an organization or whatever it is, these things they progress in life through the power of decision making. A company like Nokia, they said we decided not to do anything. They said we did not do anything wrong. No, 
you failed to decide to move with the trends of the day and the rest they say is history see we're living in such a day and in such an age where we've got to make very informed and thank god the information is there very informed decisions and when talk about informed i'm talking about data i'm also talking about intuition i'm talking about the sixth sense the seventh sense the eighth sense and so on but we don't need to wait too long for all those things to be aligned we're living in such a in a in a day and in an age where a day a day's delay in making a decision is just too late too late on so we need to be snappy in decision making and i'm not saying that we become so haphazard and not responsible but we need to be snappy first we need to be constantly making decisions we need to be incessantly making decisions we need to be instantly making decisions and moving with those decisions and i've been saying and i'm coming to a close of this episodes that there are several decisions that you're supposed to make in life and there could be very many of them but i've just focused on six of them so far and i'm going to look at the sixth today The first decision we talked about was the decision to be reflective, to add some knowledge from the life that you've already lived by reviewing it and by being reflective, by me- being meditative, by looking at course correction, things that you you've done, how could you have done better? You know, the feedback that you've gotten in life from people, from events, from targets that you miss and so on. What can you do better next time? Being reflective. We're living in a day and age where it's just activity upon activity upon activity people don't reflect anymore people just get out of their houses like a bird out of a nest and come back in the evening and they repeat the process the whole week and the whole month and the year is gone but we need to be deep people meditative reflective we need to think about things think about stuff we need to quieten ourselves and consider life therefore our life becomes richer our decisions become better deeper you know more interesting well informed wiser decisions so that's the first decision you need to make if you're not going to make the decision to be reflective it will not happen by itself the second decision we talked about is you need to make a decision that i am going to be a man of value i'm going to be valuable or i'm going to be a man of value again if you do not make a decision to do that it's not going to happen it doesn't happen by itself it has got to be activated The third decision we talked about that you need to make is the decision to increase your capacity. You can always be better, you can grow and become better. The things that you are not able to do today, they don't necessarily mean to be impossibilities. They are not necessarily impossibilities. It is because your capacity is not ready yet. That means that you can still do something towards it and you know increase your capacity so that you can be able to take these things on and succeed in life. The fourth decision that you need to make. We say that it is the decision to collaborate, the decision to bring men and women in your life, either men or men and women of like passions or men and women who are doing extremely better than yourself so that you can become a better human being. You hang around the egos, you fly together with them. You know, you hang around the chickens, you scratch around with them. it goes without saying so the decision to collaborate again if you do not make that conscious effort that conscious decision just to be for lack of a better word a pest in people's lives until they do business with you, they do life with the people who matter people whom you admire the quality of your life is going to be affected thus and then we said yesterday the decision number 5 that you need to make is the decision about your health health is critical people are dying left right and center i'm recording this in the day and age where covid is ravaging people yesterday i was speaking with a medical doctor who is in the front lines in uganda and i had a meeting with him and he said that what i am seeing in the front lines it is not easy the beds are filled up he said even if i dropped right now and i had difficulty in breathing I am not get oxygen it is that bad and uh, uh, on the same token 
I am in WhatsApp groups where people are basically writing off this COVID-19 thing and saying that it's not there, you know, it's a big deal. It's not a big deal. Malaria is wasting more people than COVID-19. See, that is a decision you're making. My point is that you live in this world through your body and the body has to be healthy. So you've got to make a decision to be healthier. And if you don't make the decision to be healthier consciously, chances are that you will not be. I kid you not. So today we are going to close this mini-series. We have been talking about decisions, how important decisions are, how important it is for us to be incessant, instant, constant in our decision making, how important it is for us not to be vacillating and, you know, waiting for conducive environments, perfection to come before we make decisions and before we move. And we've been discussing the kinds of decisions that we need to make. And today, I close with this, my pet subject. If you're going to make a decision, the top 10 decisions, actually I should even extend to top 10, but I'm going to end on this. The top 10 decisions, if you're going to make one of the top 10 decisions in your life, decision number six, it is going to be decision to know, to own, and to deploy your calling, your purpose, your destiny, your vision, your why, your reason for existence, to know it, to fall in love with it, to own it, to believe in it, and to incessantly deploy it from the get-go, from the moment you're waking up, you know, I'm supposed to deploy, this is my vision, I'm supposed to deploy it, this is my purpose, I'm supposed to deploy it. Again, it is an issue of decision making. If you will not make a decision to know your purpose, you will not know it. The skies are not going to open and call your name. You're not going to have a burning bush experience. You're not going to have a staircase like Jacob. I mean, you're going, not going to have angels visiting you like they visited uh, Samson's father and mother. You're not going to have a visitation like Gideon did have. You've got to make a decision concerning your purpose if you do not make a decision to know what it is you will not know what it is and yet it is there and yet it is the reason as to why you are existing today and it is the reason as to why you are called you are sustained on the face of the earth because of that purpose so i'm saying this very many people by the droves millions of them they do not know their purpose they do not know their vision in life. Why? Because they have not decided. They have not drawn a line in the sun and said, I am going to know what my purpose is. In the interim, people are distracted by this and that. This activity, that activity. I've got to watch this. I've got to put food on the table. I've got to study this subject. I've got to do this. I've got to visit that person. I've got to watch the politics, I've got to invest and so on. And we are so filled with activities from day go, come and so on. And we don't know why we are here. We don't know what our purpose is. And the answer is simply a decision. Decide. I want to know what it is. And let me tell you, the moment you make a decision to know what your purpose is, Everything starts being aligned and put into place so that you can know what it is. If you needed a book, you will get books by the droves. If you needed a coach, you will get a coach. If you needed a mentor, you will get a mentor. If you needed someone to open your eyes, you will get it. If you needed an inspirational message, you will get it. But that is until you make the decision. Unless the decision is made nothing happens. Books are not going to be there and yet they are there in the droves. Coaches are not going to be there and yet they are there by the droves. Inspirational messages will not come your way but they are floating all over the place even as I speak. Podcasts will not be there but they are there. Articles and so on. What I'm saying is that the moment you draw a line in the sun and decide to know what your purpose in life is, that's the moment 
that you'll get to know it. That's the moment that the journey of knowing it starts. But then knowing it is just the beginning. You've got to own it. I mean, people googling your name, they must, of necessity, identify you with the purpose itself. And then you must deploy it. People must see you do it. That's the reason as to why you are here. So friends, we come to the close of this mini-series where we've been talking about decisions. The top six decisions that I believe are important for you and I to make. Decision number one is the decision to be reflective. Decision number two is the decision to be a man or a woman of value. Decision number three is the decision to increase your capacity. Decision number four is the decision to collaborate. Number five, the decision about your health, to be healthier. And lastly, it is a decision to know, to own, and to deploy your purpose. Well, until next time, when we're talking about something else, be a decision maker and see your life change. Bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.